da 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 If you would like to leave a question for me to answer in an upcoming episode, then feel free. This gives me more content to discuss as well as making the community bigger. Hello everybody and welcome to the 40th episode of Dudley's Poke Know How. Now today we're going to be discussing a subject I've wanted to make a video about since before I joined YouTube. Around the sort of time I was doing a Let's Play of Indiana Jones of the Last Crusade on the Sega Mega Drive. Yes, I did it! <laughs> <laughs> that game can die in a fire. Anyway, this episode is going to be about internal batteries. Now this is actually a really important thing to know about if you intend to play any of the Pokemon cartridge games that were released before Diamond and Pearl were. Internal batteries are a subject I was originally going to cover in a Giving Back to You segment in the earlier days of Poke Know How. Now it's finally getting a whole video dedicated to it. So here we go. To begin with, as I've said before, the first Pokemon game I ever owned was Pokemon Silver. I adored this game as a kid, and still do to this day. Watching the Kanto anime and playing through Johto on the Game Boy was an absolute blast. Now after a long time of playing Silver, me and my mum visited a friend of hers one day who had a son. He had Pokemon Gold. We battled, traded, and funnily enough, that was the day we found out Haunter evolved into Gengar when he traded it to me. He wanted it back and I was like, no bruh, you gave it to me. Innocent times. Now on that day we decided to try something. We decided to lend our games to each other so that we could try them out and experience any differences. So I borrowed Pokemon Gold from him. Unfortunately while I had it, someone broke into my mum's friend's house and stole a bunch of stuff including my Pokemon Silver cartridge. Now because my game got stolen, they decided to be nice and let me keep gold from myself, which was very sweet of both of them. So now I had Pokemon Gold. I started a new game as my friend had got into Kanto and I hadn't beaten Lance, so I didn't want Kanto spoiled for me. I played through the game and got a great team. I was playing the game at a school youth club and I got to the end of Victory Road, just before the Elite Four, with my Typhlosion and Gengar at the ready. I was very confident I could actually beat Lance this time. I saved the game, left it in a place where we kept our belongings at the youth club and went downstairs. I came back upstairs to get the game when I was leaving and it had been stolen. So that ended my ability to play Pokemon for a while. I wouldn't play another Pokemon game until Pokemon Sapphire was released in 2003. I played all the new main series Pokemon games that came out for the next few years, and around the time I was in college, I found a Pokemon Gold cartridge available to buy online. I guess you could say this kickstarted my I can actually buy things I like on the internet phase. Now I'd wanted to play the original Gen 2 games again for so long and obviously I bought it. It arrived and I played the game for about an hour and a half. Pure nostalgia. I got my starter Pokemon, cleared out Bellsprout Tower, took down Faulkner, saved the game as normal and turned the game off. Probably about 15 minutes later I went back to play it and no save file. Everything had been lost. See, if you've got a saved game on Pokemon, you'll always see a continue option on the main screen. This had none. I stared at it in disbelief. Had I bought a fake game online that couldn't save? Was I conned? I looked it up, and that's the day I found out about the internal batteries. See, the old Game Boy cartridges run on little batteries like this. They're essentially batteries for things like watches. In Pokemon Silver, Gold and Crystal, the battery keeps track of the time after you set it in game and keeps your save file alive. More details on that in a bit. So what I think happened is the person who was selling the game online found out they couldn't play gold after years of owning it, or since they bought it online and couldn't play it themselves, they decided to keep the chain going and sell it to the next poor sap. So this is what I did. I found a YouTube video showing me how to change the internal battery of gold. You unscrew the cartridge and the battery is soldered to two little metal holders, and the bottom holder is soldered to the base of the cartridge. What I did first was I had to very carefully chisel at each solder point with a screwdriver and disconnect each point. This took about 35 minutes. Then I got a new battery, sealed the cartridge so that the holders would keep it in place and then I tested the game. I made a save file and... it worked. I'd actually done some sort of circuit board work and had been successful. Not gonna lie, I was pretty proud of myself. 
Years later, my friend had the same problem with Crystal, and I forgot entirely how to do it, and I got my dad to help him, but, but I was proud of myself. So now God was its old brilliant self again, and I could play it properly. Now the batteries are supposed to last for about 8 years, so if you've replaced them recently, you're pretty set. Otherwise it's a scary ticking time bomb. There was a time recently where I hadn't played gold in a while, and me and my friends were playing through it alongside each other, battling after each gym and tallying up for points of the wins. We have fun doing this. I got to Ecruteque and I kid you not, I defeated Morty solely with my coughing. It used rollout, Gengar missed with hypnosis, it was a thing of beauty. I waited for my friend to catch up too, and eventually he beat Morty as well. We met for a battle, I turned the game on to battle him, and no save file. The internal battery had run out while waiting for my friend to catch up. Rest in peace, Beast Coughing. You and Quilava will be missed. So remember, if you change the battery, make sure to stay on top of when you last played the game. Now when the Gen 3 games of Sapphire, Ruby and Emerald came out on the Game Boy Advance, they had the same battery problem, but it was a bit different. See, before the imminent fate of Gen 3 internal batteries running out of juice came to pass, you could plant berries and grow them to expand your inventory, you could go to the lottery on a daily basis to try and win prizes, etc. You'd begin the game by setting a time on the clock, and time in the game would flow accordingly. However, with internal battery clocks gone, whatever time you set stays the same for the rest of the playthrough. It's like everything in Hoenn is trapped in an eternal time loop. <coughs> However, this is only a slight problem for the Gen 3 games. For starters, it means you have to be less spending with your berries, as planting them now is basically their death sentence. They won't grow. And the lottery can only be done the first time you try it and never again. I'd argue that these are problems that don't actually take away from your experience of Hoenn, but the biggest problem is probably Shoal Cave. See, every four hours in real time, Shoal Cave either has high tide or low tide. If a tide is in, you can get specific items, and if the tide's out, you can get other items and also explore more of the cave. The icy centre of the cave contains the TM for Hell, and is also the only place where you can get the Pokemon Snow Run, if you want it for your team. But if you happen to pick a clock time right at the start of the game, when the tide will be in, the tide will always be in, and you'll never be able to capture a snow run if you wanted one. Thankfully, saving the game isn't controlled by the internal battery this time round in Gen 3, so there's no risk of your save file being deleted because of it. Which is convenient, because to my knowledge, there isn't actually a way to change the batteries in the Gen 3 games. Basically, in Gen 2, you need the battery to save, and then all daily events etc. happen as they should do. For bug contests, trainers giving you special items on certain days of the week, etc. In Gen 3, you can save the game, but time never changes. So daily events and the like will stay the same and you'll get no second chances. Once the DS games got introduced, internal battery problems became a thing of the past. With the DS, the clock can be set and will always run accordingly. Also, of course, I have to mention that all of the main series Pokemon games that came before Pokemon Sapphire, Red, Blue, Yellow, Silver, Gold and Crystal, have since been released for digital download on the 3DS, with trade and battle features included. This is awesome, but for people wanting to do Let's Plays with the old cartridges, or can't play the new digital versions, it's still important to know about the internal batteries, especially for the Gen 2 games. So, there you have it. If you found this video useful, or know anyone who still wants to play the old Gen 2 games, feel free to share it, as I'd like less people to endure the pain of losing those save files like I experienced. Moving on to the quiz section. Welcome to the quiz section. Let's jump right into the questions. Question 1. Name this Pokemon. Name this Pokemon. Question 2. What item must you give to a Porygon 2 to make it evolve when trading it? What item must you give a Porygon 2 to make it evolve when trading it? Question 3. True or false? Blossom is a grass poison type. True or false? Blossom is a grass poison type. Question 4. Name the episode this screenshot is from. Name the episode this screenshot is from. Question 5. What typing do all of these Pokemon share? What typing do all of these Pokemon share? Question 6. What type of Pokemon is Sableye? 
What type of Pokemon is Sableye? Question 7. What is the gender difference between male and female Combi? What is the gender difference between male and female Combi? Question 8. How many toes in total does Togepi have? How many toes in total does Togepi have? Question 9. Name this Pokemon. Name this Pokemon. And question 10. True or false? Arbok can be taught Earthquake in Pokemon Fire Red. True or false? Arbok can be taught Earthquake in Pokemon Fire Red. And when you're ready, let's go over the answers. Question 1. Name this Pokemon? It was Donphan. Question 2. What item must you give to a Porygon 2 to make it evolve when trading it? That is the dubious disc. Question 3. True or false? Blossom is a grass poison type? That is false. It is only grass type. Question 4. Name the episode this screenshot is from? It's from the episode The Flame Pokemonathon. My VHS always called it The Great Race. So if you said The Great Race, I'm giving you a point for that too. And I always remembered it as that. Question 5. What typing do all of these Pokemon share? They are all part water type. Question 6. What type of Pokemon is Sableye? It is dark and ghost. Question 7. What is the gender difference between male and female Combi? The female has a red dot on it and the male one doesn't. Question 8. How many toes in total does Togepi have? It has four altogether, two on each foot. Question 9. Name this Pokemon. This is Elekid. And question 10. True or false? Arbok can be taught Earthquake in Pokemon Fire Red? That is true. And that's the quiz for you this week. See you in Dex Entries. Welcome to Dex Entries and this time we're talking about Wigglytuff. Wigglytuff has been completely overshadowed by Jigglypuff over the years. So much so that I know nothing about it. Uh, I can only make guess predictions for it because I don't know what else to think. Maybe it will say something about Jiggly... <laughs> See I'm even mixing it up. Wigglytuff using body slam to attack enemies or slapping them and things. Or just a random guess. Maybe Wigglytuff's known for dancing. I don't know. This is just... I've got no idea. So let's see what we can find out. Oh, that's cute. You know, I kind of went into this remembering that it could probably inhale itself to greater sizes. But I forgot to mention that one. But basically a lot of them do say that. There's even a Pokedex entry here that says... It can inhale to 20 times its size. And also, this one I did predict correctly. Soul Silvers. It has very fine fur. Take care not to make it angry or it may inflate steadily and hit you with a body slam. But also, there's some other interesting ones here that are quite good. Uh, let's see, where is it? Where is it? Um, here we go. Wigglytuff has large saucer-like eyes. The surfaces of its eyes are always covered with a thin layer of tears. If any dust gets in this Pokemon's eyes, it is quickly washed away. But that's not the best one, because I think we found the cutest Pokedex entry for any Pokemon so far. Their fur feels so good that if two of them snuggle together, they won't want to be separated. That's cute. And it also says for a lot of them that, um, well, it says, The rich fluffy fur that covers its body feels so good but anyone who feels it can't stop touching it. There's also a lot of them here about sleeping with a wiggly sleeping with a wiggly tuff feels really comfy. So yeah, that's basically it. I'm not gonna lie, I'm really curious to know what the handbook says. So um Pokemon Handbook Pokemon Handbook Where's the handbook? Do 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 find the handbook. Do 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 I can't find the handbook! Why didn't I get it out before I started filming? Haha! I found you.
You don't want to mess with this big-eyed Pokemon. When it gets angry, Wigglytuff sucks in air and inflates its soft, rubbery body like a giant balloon. At super size, it can scare off even the meanest enemies. How do you explain that to your mum and dad? That's a bit weird. Why did it focus on... How do you explain that to your mum and dad? Well, that's Wigglytuff's deck entry. Well, that's the end of this episode of Dudley's Poker Know How. See you for the next one.